Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Twice a month, we discuss important and timely topics centered around our Hawaii food service industry. Today, we have a very timely topic. As most of the people, as most of our viewers know, the city and county of Honolulu, September 5th ends the last extension of the disposable foodware ordinance, which is fondly called DFWO, which regulates the use of polystyrene foam containers, disposable plastic serviceware, and disposable plastic straws. So today we have two guests, and I'd like to first have them introduce themselves. Hey, Henry, can you please introduce yourself? Tell them your title and a little bit about yourself. No, my title is, well, first of all, my name is Henry Gabriel. I'm with the city and county of Honolulu with the Refuse Division. Um, with the, I'm the Recycling Program Branch Chief. And basically, my role in the Disposable Foodware Ordinance, or the DFWO, is to enforce, you know, and I have a staff that will enforce the DFWO come uh, starting September 6th. Thank you, Henry. So, Ray? Could you please introduce yourself, your title, and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm Ray Amino Rosco. I work for uh, Triple F Distributing, um, Vice President of Sales and Product Development. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, going forward with this bill, finally, uh, Bill 40, because we do have product available and we want to get it out to the uh, consumers as soon as possible. Thank you, Ray. So let's start off with Henry. Come on, Henry, let's hear about it because I have been getting so many calls. And like I mentioned earlier, the same questions over and over. I'm hoping that by sending out this recording, it's going to you know, eliminate some of those calls that you and I are getting. So tell us a little bit about it. You and I were just talking about it. I said, Henry, has it been two years that <laughs> we've been going through this? And you're like, yes, Cheryl. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the DF? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Once, uh, once again, well, thank you for having me on this. This is um, timely, very timely. Um, the Disposable Foodware Ordinance actually passed into law December 15, 2019. And here we are. Two, two years, seven months later, and we're and it's still not in full effect. But like um, like Cheryl said, it has restrictions to single-use plastics, including polystyrene, uh, disposable plastic foodware, and serviceware, and then also straws upon request. Um, the industry exemption started March third, twenty twenty-two, and it lasts. It it will last for six months, so it does end come September fifth, uh, twenty twenty-two. So during that time, that six month period, what the reason being was to allow businesses enough time to order product, use up product. And from my understanding, one to three months is really the turnaround time for the past you know, uh, few months for people to obtain compliant products. And that's where we are right now. It's, it, it, my, my hope is that the word is getting out there. We're moving forward with this, and there's distributors and um, you know throughout the island, local distributors that have compliant product available. Thank you, Henry. So Ray, what have you been hearing as a distributor? You're talking and and be meeting with all our restaurateurs out there. So what are you hearing? Well, I am hearing a lot of uh, a lot of the the restaurateurs are still a little bit confused about what products are available out there. Um, I would suggest they really get with their salesperson that they have calling on them uh, to, uh, to go over the product line that's, that's available to them. Um, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to say loopholes in the bill, but it's just the, the wording is, is, is good for the, it's good for the restaurant tour. I don't think they really realize that. Uh, they made it very easy for Henry's group has made it very easy for a lot of things to be compliant. Uh, and it depends what you're you're doing in the industry. You know, if you're if it's over the counter service or whether it's uh, stuff that is products that are merchandise, um, you can be you can really uh, use a lot of different products. I should say that that would be the best thing to say. Thank you, Ray. So, Henry, I have a few questions here that were sent in from our members. Before I go through that, why don't you go ahead and answer the most frequent questions you've been asked? The, the most frequent question that I've been asked is, 
will the industry exemption be extended? And you're hearing it from me now, the guy who kind of oversees this entire thing. Um, no, it's, it's not going to be extended. We're looking at September 5th as the end date for the industry exemption. And then September 6th is when the law will be in full effect. There are some sections of the law that have been in effect. And that is the service where um, upon request and also the straws upon request. But the section that we, we granted ENV, Department of Environmental Services granted for uh, the foodware, uh, polystyrene and the um, plastic foodware, that will end come September 5th. So come September 6th, it will be, the law will be uh, in full effect for the first time. But that yes. is the number one question. Will it be extended? And the answer is no. <laughs> yes, that's the most frequent question I hear too. The other question is, which agency, Henry, will be enforcing and passing out citations? So the Department of Environmental Services, this is quite long, but the Department of Environmental Services, Refuse Division, Recycling Branch, and that is the branch that I oversee. We will be uh, enforcing, we will continue the public education. And that, that's been our main goal throughout this whole time is really to help businesses, to help uh, food vendors and distributors understand the law. And like Raymond was mentioning, there's, there's some gray areas and, and, and we still have to kind of go back, okay, how do, you, you know, how do we interpret this? How do we interpret that? But I highly recommend whether you're a distributor or a food vendor, to, to call us. And if, if you don't mind, Cheryl, if I can give my number right now and, and all of that, okay. So, and this is my direct line and I give this to everyone. So it's 808-768-3427. That is my direct line. And I really, please call me if you have any questions on, on this um, ordinance. Um, the other thing that I'd like to mention is that we have a webpage, honolulu.gov backslash Opala. And on that webpage, we have a DFWO page. It provides all the information that I'm talking about, or even the actual ordinance. We have public education that, that businesses can download and use. So the combination of being as transparent as, as, as I can, along with the educational material, should help transition to these uh, compliant products. Thank you, Henry. And, and as I always tell you, Henry, you know, we all are neighbors and we're all part of this community. We're family. So your our partnership with the Hawaii Restaurant Association and you, Henry, your office has always been just like Ohana, right? And we appreciate all this time that you've been putting out there. And it's been a long two years, you and I, and it's going to happen. And so yeah. now that's why this timely conversation. The other question that I get most often, especially from the small mom and pops, is what is the citation going to be? Should they not be compliant, Henry? Okay. Um, I, I, there, there is a fine involved with the DFWO, but I'd like to preface the, my response first by saying that we will continue to educate and, and help businesses, no matter how big, no matter if, if you're a small mom and pop, that's one of the reasons why I try to give out my number, my direct line. That way, you know, whether, you know, if you're a small business, you're not going through option this, option that, you're calling me directly. And then I'll be able to hand you over to staff to then help you out. The, the first offense is $100, it, but it can go as, as high as $1,000. And just to kind of talk about the process of, of a fine. And you'll find this on our, our ENV admin rules. That's where it states all of it. Uh, but basically, the what we would do is we would go out to a restaurant and we would, you know, see how or, and what type of foodware is being serviceware as well is being um, provided. And then if there's any questions, we would ask for documentation to just to show that it is a compliant or an alternative product. Um, if it's not. You know, we issue a notice of violation, which we would give the restaurant more time to correct the problem. Then we would ask, we would provide them with, you know, distributor information or who's your distributor. You may want to contact them. Um, but if it isn't resolved, you know, through all of the communication that we have with the food vendors, um, with food vendor, uh, then we issue a notice of order, an, an, an NOO. 
And that is when we the, the fine would be issued. And the first fine, the first offense is one hundred dollars. And then if it's re, it, if it's repeated, it can go as high as a thousand dollars. But once once again, we're we're not really looking out there. We know how difficult it is to you know to to have a business in in the, especially now. So we're not looking out. We're not looking to find anybody. We're really just trying to help businesses comply with the ordinance. Thank you, Henry. Because as you know, many of the restaurateurs have called me, especially the small mom and pops, and they're like, Cheryl, you know, we're still struggling financially, and you know, we still haven't really dug ourselves out of that COVID hole, and you know, this is going to now increase the cost. And and as you mentioned, Ray, many of the smaller restaurants are afraid to raise their prices. They're afraid because they're going to lose customers. They're afraid that the customers will not come back once they start raising that plate lunch price or that bento price. Um, Ray, do you have any comments on that? I, I just think that, you know, the, the product overall is the increase that's been coming anyway, on uh, even on the, the things that are uh, are compliant now, you know, prices that on, you know, shipping uh, just has gone up tremendously because of the price of oil. Uh, but the basis for product has just been escalating for the last two and a half years since COVID. So, I mean, if, so going the, going the uh, compliant route is overall is not that more expensive. And in, in some cases, yeah, a couple items it is, but if you just raise your prices the minimal to cover the, cover the cost, you know, you'll be okay. You know, you should be okay. Um, you know, we, I've been in the industry forever and, you know, we, we do have a, you know, a restaurant. So we are, you know, we've been, we've been, been compliant for the last, because I've been forcing it upon the restaurant. Uh, we've been compliant almost for the two years right now. So uh, just, you just have to know how to adjust your costs, you know, and then offer, like I said, the cutlery that to take out cutlery, the take out straws, just offer them. Don't, don't automatically give to your customers. So you can save costs there. Very nice, Ray. That's the beauty of it. Ray is not only the vice president of a distributor, but he also, he and his wife have a restaurant. So he not only understands what restaurateurs are going through it, he's living it. The other question that I have, and I don't know who to ask this question to is, you know, when I go to Costco and Sam's Club, I do see the small mom and pop still buying the containers that really are not still not going to be compliant from the Costco's and Sam's Club. So the question is, that came in from our members. Why are they allowed to even sell it? So I'll, I'll take the um, first stab at this. Um, they are allowed. So any any, you know, I'll, I'll try and be as ginger as I can uh, in the response. Um, any company can still sell disposable plastic serviceware, disposable plastic foodware. It really depends on the use. Um, so, for instance, if there's an organization out there that is providing um, food to those in need and there is no purchase involved, you can use a non-compliant foodware, non-compliant serviceware. You can use a plastic plate or a plastic um, uh, container and provide the food. There's no purchase there. So in, situ in a situation like that, as a as a distributor or as as a Costco or a Sam's, they can. It's just they would have to know that they're using it for that purpose. And I've been to several showrooms where they, you know, it's it's spelled out. It, it's like, okay, these are compliant products used for this purpose. These are non-compliant products used for this purpose. Now, when we go out and we do an inspection, let's say at Sam's or or Costco, we will ask them. You know, for this purpose, are you aware that they are using it for business, or are you aware that they're using it for, you know, a non-customer um, per the ordinance type of use? So, it is still um, um, you still can sell these these types of products. My my hope though is that once we start, it, it will be a slow transition. Once we transition over into the non-compliant, is it really worth? providing the two types of products um, to the homeowner. You know, Ray had mentioned about cost and everything like that, but now is it gonna be a management decision to say, okay, do we need to carry both products or should we just carry the one compliant product because we know that will work and we don't have to worry about the headache. So, okay, it's only for this use or for that use. So 
but yeah, we're very, very involved in um, in in seeing the 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 ways that businesses can uh, sell those non-compliant products. Very good. So the other question that I did have come in was for um, catering. So is there any special guidelines for containers that are used in catering events? So for catered food. The foodware used at a catered event is exempt, and that is spelled out in, in ordinance. However, your serviceware that you provide is not exempt. So the only thing in catered food, uh, the exemption is for that foodware. Now, if you're going to provide foodware to the, um, at the event, if you're going to provide serviceware, we would have to ask several questions to make sure that, okay, do you, are, you, know, are you using non-compliant or compliant? Is it... Um, is it an event where you know you paid to go? We'd have to ask all these questions to really see if the serviceware or the foodware portion of it has to comply. But for the foodware itself that you're providing the food at the event, that is exempt. Very, very good. Thank you so much for the detailed explanation, Henry. Ray, do you have anything else you want to add in? Well, I, going back to the catering part of the business, what Henry and I discussed a couple of weeks ago was about uh, the fundraisers. So if you're doing a fundraiser, you can use a non-compliant product because you're not charging, you're not make, you're not charging the consumer at all. So it can be a plastic cup that is non-compliant because as long as there's no charge to it, I think this kind of people don't read the bill in that sense. You can use it. It's a compliant product. So uh, sampling spoons also. So if somebody's doing samplings, uh, that also can be used for um, on, a, on a regular basis. So that's that's where the that's where the gray areas are, and which is, you know, I think like you said, if Henry, they call Henry up, he'll give you the details. And when and the more you talk to him, the more you know he's on he's on both sides. You know, he wants to be compliant. We all want to be compliant, but we also have to be. Um, uh, aware, you know, um, aware of cost, you know, and that's where the cost will be, you know. Very good. Thank you, Ray. So, Henry, do you have any final statements before we wrap up the show? Because we really appreciate your time here today. We're trying to, well, we, we will send out this video so that we hopefully, you know, reduces the amount of calls both, both you and I get when it says it gets closer to September 5th, right? Any yeah, other no, it's, it's funny that you say that because over the last maybe two weeks, we've been receiving a lot of uh, calls and uh, um, some exemption applications. Let me let me clarify about the exemption really quick. Um, so the industry exemption that was granted by ENV and September 5th, that doesn't prohibit a vendor, a food vendor to apply for an exemption. And so there are exemptions that uh, food vendors can apply for that's no alternative available. And these are, and, and really, these, and like I mentioned, uh, I gave you my, I gave my number out, so please call because there are specifics in the exemption. So no alternative exemption, uh, no alternative, uh, no, well, I can't, no alternative available is the one uh, exemption. Significant hardship is number two, and then the industry exemption. Um, but a lot of the, fir the first two that I mentioned is really specific to the use of the uh, compliant product. It's not because of compliant or product availability. And I think that's where a lot of the food vendors are kind of mixed up in a way. But we, once again, when you apply for an exemption, um, you will, you will we'll evaluate it and then we'll provide um, our recommend, or not our recommendation, the, the department will then um, you know, decide. On, on which way to go with the application. Um, so you, so food vendors can, they can still apply for uh, an exemption. If there's any questions, please call me, or we do have a, a website too, or a, um, a email address, businessrecycle at honolulu.gov is our, is our website. Let me just double check that, businessrecycle at honolulu.gov, yes. And then our business line, uh, if you have any questions and you don't want to call me, you can call 768-3200 extension 6. So either way, you can call me or you can call those numbers as, or email, and we will be gladly to help you, to help all businesses out there. 
Thank you, Henry. You've made it so easy, the process. All right, this question is for Ray. Ray, one of the questions that came in from our members, as you know, in Hawaii, it's all about the plate lunches with gravy over everything. We've got soy sauce over everything. And so the, the containers are not withstanding all the liquids within that takeout container. What would you recommend, Ray? I would recommend uh, a, putting, you know, that to use a piece of foil. You know, there's a piece of foil under, underneath the plate, you know, so it is not going to leak into your car. Um, there is some good alternatives on on the portion cups that they can just put it on the side, sauce on the side. I think that's what people have to realize. You have to put a lot of sauces on the side now. So there is a paper container that's out there that, you know, that's available through our, our distrib distribution here and other distributors. And it, it works very well. I mean, it's not going to last seven hours or eight hours, but it does last by the time you get home to eat that, that meal. Uh, that's one of the recommendations. Uh, just look at the alternative. Ask, ask your rep. Uh, foil containers, around foil containers. Just might to switch to that. Uh, and put there's a foil board lid that you can use and just, just do it that way. But uh, there's, I said, there's other alternatives. Don't always have to think that you have to use the big gas because the big gas will soak up your sauces. And uh, the technology coming out eventually, there's so much technology coming out that we're seeing. Uh, it'll be, they'll be better to where they'll be more soluble, uh, the more, more soluble product. Thank you. So Ray, before we close, is there anything else that you would like to say as a closing remark? Um, I, I would just talk, have your, talk to your, talk to your salespeople, talk to them, or like I said, call Henry's office up. Uh, we're willing here, we're here to help, you know, they can call triple uh, F if they want to. I'll, I'll try to walk them through it and have, I have suggestions that uh, product they, they might not be able to, uh, that they can use, you know, so um, sometimes there's salespeople that everybody gets confused about the bill. And if you can read it four to five different times and you're not going to see the same thing, but uh, just ask, I, I feel I'm pretty good about being an expert on it. And it's, Henry is also, he, and he's asked a lot of questions about even our product lines that we carry, you know, that's out there from the, from the distributors. So it's, it's been a learning process for him. <laughs> it's been a learning yeah. process for all of us, right, guys? Like I said, Henry, before we jumped on the call, Henry, we've been in it for two years. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, gentlemen, before I close the show, anything else? Um, the, you know, we're, you know, as I've been saying, we're here to support, uh, we're here to provide help, um, call me, um, and, and I'll do my best to, and the staff, we will do our best to help any business out distributor or food vendor or industry. Uh, we do, we also will come down to your facility and, and we'll, we'll look at how you do things. So we're just not a phone call away. We will make that effort to come and visit as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ray, anything else before I close the show? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. So again, viewers, if you're interested in learning more and if you need to have any, any more information, contact us at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. Again, Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. We'll see everyone in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.